In order to onboard an OAS file, we first navigate to the API Gateway section in our ADM, the control and management plane for WAF. In this example, we'll use the Pet Store API definition file. Once it's uploaded, we'll be able to parse the OAS file and identify all the API resources along with their paths and accepted methods for each individual endpoint. We can also view the imported API definitions to make sure it's been successfully imported. The next step is to deploy these definitions that we just created. We navigate to the Deployment tab to create an instance of the Pet Store API. We name the deployment Pet Store Sandbox. Then we add the API proxy that handles all the traffic that the Pet Store API receives by specifying an IP address and port. We can also offload SSL traffic by configuring the TLS certificate and key. Then we define the upstream services. The first is the Pet Store service. The second upstream service that we'll configure is the Pet Store user API. Next, we'll configure routing by adding a new entry named Route Service. Select a resource from the drop-down and choose the Pet Store service that we just configured. What this does is it sends all traffic to the Pet Store backend service. The second routing entry will route traffic to the Pet Store user API. Clicking on Save deploys these configurations. The final step involving configuring policies for the deployment that we just created, the first policy that we configure is for the Pet Store service. The drop-down displays all of the policies available. As you can see, we can configure authentication, both basic and JWT-based authentication, set rate limiting policies, as well as apply bot and WAF security policies to the API resources that are shown. For the pet store service we set up, a rate limiting policy will be used with the specific parameters and the desired action. We then create a second policy, the pet store user. From the policy drop-down menu, we select JWT validation, which is a token-based authentication. This requires to input OAuth parameters. For validating the tokens and receiving the certificates from a key service, we also configure the issuer for the authentication tokens. Finally, we configure a rate limiting policy for the pet store user with a responder action. As you can see, with low touch configurations and onboarding, the pet store application is able to offload all security concerns such as SSL offload, rate limiting, and DDoS protection, and authentication and authorization to the Citrix API gateway freeing the application developers to focus on the core business logic. Now we'll be walking through API analytics. Here we have the API Analytics dashboard. In summary, we show how many API instances are registered, how many endpoints there are, and identify how the APIs are performing. We show the API performance distribution in terms of the response time, the overall end-to-end -end response time, as well as the back-end server response time. There are certain APIs that are exceeding 100 milliseconds and others are in the 30 to 100 millisecond range. Looking at the top API instances, we can sort them by overall response time or backend server response time, and here we can look at our top API endpoint performance as well as with the same metrics. And we can also look at any authentication failures as well as some of the other security metrics around authentication failures, which we've seen for the top endpoints. So now let's take an example look at one of the metrics belonging to one of our pet stores. So here we are looking at a top summary of the key metrics around the API endpoints with request and response time, bandwidth, and authentication failures, and again, a distribution of the APIs for the instance. And again, we have a display of the endpoints with the top APIs by response time, based on bandwidth and requests, and we can sort based on both. We can also look at locations from which the APIs are being accessed. In this case, we have a couple of countries displayed on the map. 
Finally, we can look at the response status distribution for the API instance. Moving to the security aspects of APIs, we can see that there were a couple of authentication failures and the reason for each. Similar, if we can see if the API was rate limited per a policy configured, we can also see how many requests were dropped due to the rate limit and the overall trend of the same. We can also see the number of SSL errors from the front end as well as the back end. We can also show other SSL attributes, such as the certs, cipher, key strength, and at an instance or endpoint level. So let's pick up one of the endpoints and drill down to see what kind of details we have on it. You can see the performance metrics, the overall and backend response time, and the overall trend, including the bandwidth consumed and the location from which the endpoint has been accessed including also the bandwidth and average response time for that location. These are just some of the performance and uses metrics, as we can also look similarly at the authentication failure limit and any SSL failures per endpoint.